So today we're going to talk about um, component life cycle and um, some hooks and hopefully continue building on our new site project. Um, first, I'm going to just create a new application um, using Beat. I'm just going to call it um, React Day. Maybe it's four. I think it's four. We'll choose React, choose JavaScript, and we're done. Okay. Gonna go into the project. I'm gonna do npm install. All right, so now if I run dev, I should be able to see 5.173. There we go. So we have our, our basic app running. Um, I'm just gonna go into my app. I'm gonna delete everything that's in here. I don't need everything. I'm just gonna leave the top div. Um, Right now, I don't need the state either. Okay. So, what do you guys think of when I say component lifecycle? What what can be described in in the component lifecycle? Probably instantiation of an object, transfer of information. <laughs> And then you shut it down when you don't need it. Yeah. So a life cycle, think of it like um, just a normal life cycle. So like, let's say being born, then um, growing up or changing. And then death. <laughs> um, so similarly, our React components are going to have the same thing. So um, when a component re gets rendered onto the screen, it mounts. So mounts, update, and um, unmount. So this is basically how um, our components live. So when they are being rendered onto the screen, they get mounted. While they're on the screen, they can change. So that will cause updates. And once a component is removed from the screen, it's removed from the stack of the application and it unmounts um, and it, it goes away. So um, an easy, let's see. So in our app, let's add, um, let's create a, uh, what is it called? A component. I'm gonna call this component something. Or I'm gonna call it life cycle. I like something because you'll, you'll see. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna create this component just gonna add a new file, name it .js, x, and then in here, I'm just gonna scaffold out for default function something. And then in here, I am going to return. Um, I'm going to put a div. Okay, so this function is not going to do much. So, in anything. So, now if I go to my screen, it doesn't do anything because I did not import my component. So, if I import something, 
And now I have it displaying here. There we go. Um, so to, to be able to demonstrate the life cycle, um, it is a little easier to see it in class-based components. So I am going to create a class-based component and then we will transfer it to, uh, or we will use a functional based one afterwards using um, a hook. So I am going to create a class, export defaults class something. Um, I'm just trying to remember the syntax. So I need to also import. So we need to import component from React, right? Because that's how we do class-based components. Um, I am creating a class called something, which extends component. So it is a class of type component. Okay. And then our return is going to be inside of a render function. So render, and then we can have our return, and this return can have a div that says in something. Okay, so this is basically the same thing, right? If I refresh, I still have the correct thing displaying. So there are certain methods that um, in, in class-based components that allow us to access um, the component at different parts of the life cycle, at different points of the life cycle. So we have a function called component did mount. So component did mount is going to be executed when the component first goes onto the screen, when it first renders. So I can just put a console log here and say, um, let me just say component did mount. I can Okay. So if I go back here, I'm going to open my dev tools real quick. Go ahead and move it off to the right. Open my console. Okay, so if I refresh, I see here component did mount, I am alive. We see that it happened twice. Um, this is only because of the React strict mode that we've seen before. So um, yeah, so the component mounted and we're seeing that show up on the screen. Um, the, a second component that, or another method that we can access is components will unmount. So this gets called right before a component gets deleted or removed from our screen. There we go. And for here, um, I am being unmounted. So right now we won't really see. Okay, so we see that the component mounted and then unmounted because of our React strict mode. Like I said, it does it twice. So we're able to see that the component was brought up, it was to torn down, and then it was brought up again. And that's what we see here. Um, our last one that we can see, we, we need to add a little bit more, um, a little bit more code on our app side, but I'm going to write it out here. So component did update. 
So this gets run when our component, um, either the state or the props in our component have changed. And that will cause this component to, to re-render, to update. And this function will be called. So console.log. Um, I have been updated. All right. So let's let's add some some buttons to trigger these these events. Um, so let's make it a little more interesting to look at. So I'm going to add a button. Okay, so this button will have an onclick function that will use a certain state. Um, so basically what we want to do is have this conditionally, conditionally be rendered. Um, that way we can watch it um, render onto the screen and then be removed. And um, we'll add also some state to, to uh, what is it called? Um, to change in here. I'm, I'm lost, I'm losing words today. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm gonna create a piece of state. So constant, um, I'm gonna call this uh, render, or render component. And then set render component. equals use state. And I'm going to set this to false in the beginning. I also do want another piece of state for later. I'm going to create just a value. Um, this is just going to be any value. Set value. That way I can trigger the updating of, of the component. Oops. I did not want to import this. So use state, I'm going to say this value is zero. Um, okay, so for the first button that I want to do, this is going to create, this is going to create my um, my component here. So we haven't done that logic yet, but let's say this button on click, I'm gonna do something. So I'm going to set render component to true. Okay, I'm gonna do the similar thing with deleting. Delete. So when the component is, is visible, I can set it to false and that will completely remove the com component, make it um, unmount. And then the third button can trigger um, an update. So update. Um, so for something to cause an update in a component, we have to be sending in a certain value and then maybe that value changes um, and that will trigger an update. So we can say into the something component, I can send in a value um, and that value is going to just equal to the value that I have. The value. And so for this one, when we're clicking, this button, I am going to, instead of set render component, I just wanna change something. So I'm gonna use this value. Um, so I'm gonna set this value and I'm going to um, set it equal to a random number. So I'm just gonna do math.random. 
And then I'm gonna do a times 100 just to give it a bigger value. Um, okay, so basically what, when this button gets clicked, it'll change the value. And since the value is being sent into this something component, it should be updating. So I'm going to make this conditional. Um, and what what condition would this be based on? So I have these two pieces of state. Probably render component. Yeah. The render components um, and end. Okay. I think this looks good. So our first button is going to create the component. Our second button, our, our, our delete button will remove it. Our update button will change the value of value, um, which since it's being sent in as a prop should trigger an update. And we will be able to see these, um, these statuses pretty much based on what button we're clicking. So let's test it out. Then I have a question. Yeah. Did you do something uh, before you created uh, the class? Because when I had uh, a run my thing in my browser, it's saying mm -hmm. that component is not defined. I don't know why. Did you import it at the top? Okay. Yes, that's what I want to know. You import something. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, I did. I imported um, this the component from React. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So let's let's test it out. I'm gonna clear out my console. Um, I want to create the component, so I'll hit create. Okay, so it has been created. It, this is all that it's printing out. Um, if I want to update it, I this again this button is just gonna update the value that's being sent into um, the component. So it says I have been updated, and basically this component was re-rendered because the prop that was being sent in was updated. So if I click it again, it'll just say I've been updated again. So this number incrementing just means that this same line is being printed out over and over again. And then when I hit delete, that means that the component is being removed. Um, any questions about this? Can we go back to the code for just a second? Mm -hmm. um, here or the app? The uh, app. Yeah. Right, because that's a component of the app. So the app's going to show the buttons all the time. Mm -hmm. And it's only the component that's getting changed. OK. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So the first button because of the conditional rendering will cause this component to render onto the screen. When we hit the update button, this is going to be changing the state that is shared. So this piece of state is an app, but it's being sent into this component as a prop. So whenever the state changes, this prop, or sorry, this, um, yeah, this prop is going to change because it's linked, it's the same thing. Um, which will trigger an update on this component. Um, and then the delete one will just remove it from the screen, which will unmount it. So it's basically going to um, disappear and die. Zidam, why are you using the value prop inside this something uh, component? Where... I'm not using it. Not using um, it? I can, yeah. Um, yeah, so I can do... For a function for a class based component, I can just say props dot or this dot props dot um, what is it called? What did I call it? This value. So now once I create, if I update, this is the new number. So I get a new number every time. Um, Eric, let me see. 
the value. No, that looks correct. Um, let me see here. Are you sent both sending in the value uh, or you only need to send in the value? Update. Hmm, that is weird. Okay. Um, we can get back to it. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Um, but yeah, so this is how we can kind of see it more clearly that these separate functions will allow us to access the um to to do whatever we want during these times. So when we first mount the component when um, it's going right before it's going to be deleted and then when it updates. Um, so these functions are only accessible using class components. Um, so instead of having these three different functions, we have one hook that will allow us to do this in functional components. So let's try to do the same thing here that we did here um in a functional way so i'm going to uncomment this and then comment the class one out and let's see what we want to do so i'm going to import something uh, or into something, I'm going to import um, use effect. I think you might have you might have come across use effect. I think I mentioned it maybe once, but use effect is a hook that will allow you to execute code um, at certain times in your code uh, in in the the components life cycle. So. Let's see what the syntax looks like. So use effect is a function. And this hook or function basically takes in two parameters. Okay. So our first parameter is always going to be a callback function. It's just a function that we can um, specify that will run when this use effect runs. So in here, I'm going to define a function. And then the second parameter is going to be an array. And this array will, you can define inside of it when you want, uh, like the conditions for this use effect to be called. So I will show you how to do this in a sec. So, If it's empty, it will get rendered once. So once it first mounts, um, if you add something in here, you can add, let's say, if we were taking in the value, right? The value we were taking in as prop. If we put this value in here, then this function is going to get executed when this value is being updated. Um, so the second parameter allows us to specify when we want this use effect function to get um, to get called. So for now, let's just leave it as empty brackets. Inside of our function here, um, I'm going to just do a console log to see when this actually gets updated. But I believe this one is going to be the same as this. So I'm actually just going to copy this. So this is going to be the component did mount I'm alive. Um, and let's test it out. Okay, I updated. If I create, okay, I see that I'm alive. I see it twice. Um, let me just for our purposes here, I'm going to uncomment or sorry, I'm gonna comment out strict mode just so we can see. Okay. 
So I create it. We see the component says I'm alive. Um, if I update, nothing happens because um, this, this use effect is only getting called once when the component is rendered. It also does get called again, but only if you put a return. So if you add a return into this use effect function, so we have a callback function that we created that we sent it into our use effect. If we return from it, this will get called when um, our component is going to be unmounted. So, so when we return, I want to do console log. I don't even need to put this. Um, I'm going to do the I'm being unmounted or I am being destroyed. Okay, so the return specifies that I want this code to run when our, our component is going to be destroyed. So if I update, I create my component, I can update it, and then I can delete it. So right before it got deleted, it says I'm being destroyed. So recap, our use effect is going to allow us to access the access our component in different parts of the lifecycle. Um, so if we have an empty array as the second argument of our use effect, this will only get called um, once at at uh, component creation, and then it will get called again if we put a return statement in there. And that whatever happens inside of this return is going to execute when the component is about to be destroyed. Um, any questions about this? Is there a reason, so when I do it, it does it um, like, Twice, I know the twice is because that one thing, but it's also doing the destroyed at the same time when I do create. Did it, was yours doing the same? If thing? it's doing it, yeah. So, so the twice thing that happens is React strict mode runs, creates the component, and then destroys it, and then actually creates the component. So it creates and destroys first, and then it, is that how you're seeing it? So create, destroy, and then create. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That that's correct behavior because basically it's creating the um the component to make sure nothing wrong happens and then destroying it and then it's rendering it to the page to actually be viewed. So oh. here if I create, I can see create, destroy, create. Yeah. And if I delete again, I and then I see the destroy. Other questions? Okay, um, so what if I wanted the update? I kind of just mentioned this. So I can have another use effect if I wanted. Um, because let's say this one I only want to run on component creation and deletion. Um, and it, I don't want to have this run every single time something gets updated. So here I'm going to create another use effect. So always remember that you have a function as your first parameter and your second parameter is going to be an array. If you do not put an array here, it will get called uh, this, this use effect function. So the function that you sent in is going to get called every single time anything updates in your, in your code. So a lot of times if you forget this, you'll just end up in a loop um, and it's, it's a little dangerous when you have API calls happening in this use effect, um, which you might hit your, your limits on, on certain APIs if you just don't notice it and it just keeps running. Um, so actually, let me test out if I remove this for you guys. Okay, so if I only put, yeah, see. Oh, that's an unexpected token. I don't know where that was coming from. 
No, this is correct. Oh, I didn't close this. Uh, I see, I see the issue. This was, okay, I accidentally commented it out. Okay, um, so I'm creating this. Uh, if I update anything, so all I changed was I removed the square brackets in this use effect. So now because I removed that, every time anything happens, so if I update, this gets called again. And this is not something that I want to do. So I'm going to have to keep this, the square brackets. Um, if I want a use effect to be called when a certain value is updated, when a certain uh, state or prop or something like that, I will add it inside. You can add multiple, which is why it's an array. So if I had maybe this value and I had a certain state that I set, so I can have both of them. When either of them um, updates, then the whatever code inside of here is going to execute. So right now we have value. And when it updates, I want to say um, I have been updated. OK, so we just added a use effect. Whenever our value changes, we're going to get that console log. So I'm going to refresh this. I'm going to create. So here we see, I'm actually going to comment out strict mode again. Okay. So what happened here is we created our component, it says, um, I'm alive. It does also say I have been updated because this is a use effect that will be run when this is updated, but also on first render. So that is something that we need to keep uh, kind of be aware of that um, all use effects get run on the first render. There is a way to go around it, and I'll show it in a bit. Um, but basically, we created, we have I'm alive, we're updating, only the update one is, is being uh, being called. And when I delete, just the destroyed one is going to be called. Um, so this is not too bad of, of a functionality, but let's say we don't wanna say that it's been updated when the component first renders. Um, even though technically it's been updated because the value was nothing. Now that it's been created, the value is technically updated. That's why it runs. So for this, I can actually do, um, I could just have a conditional. Um, I can keep track of whether it's a first render or not using um, a variable. So I could say, Render. Um, actually, it's going to be true in the beginning. So if it's first render, then we do not want to print this out. So we say if not first render, okay. So if it's not the first render, we want to say that it's being updated. Um, if not, then we want to say I'm alive and then set the first render to true. So first render equals true. Okay, so let's see what this does. Create, I update, update, nothing is happening. Let's try to see why. Okay, so 
these variables don't are, are not really like state. They won't hold on to the information across renders. So to use variables that you want to use that won't trigger extra updates or um, so like in this case, we just want to hold the information about the first render. And we don't want, if we use the state, if we update this state, then it would cause a re-render to happen and we'll end up in a loop. So there's a hook that we can use called use ref. So this use ref is going to allow us to um, use a state type component, uh, sorry, um, a reference value pretty much that is not needed for rendering. It's not, it's not going to re-render the page when it gets updated because we don't want it to do that. So we're gonna be using the use ref. So for first render, I'm actually gonna make this use ref. What this creates is an object, which so first render becomes an object, mutable reference object that you can change throughout your program, but becomes, um, it becomes just kind of like a background piece that you can, uh, that can hold information. Um, so with this use ref, it's similar to use state where you can send in the initial value. So I wanted that to be true, which is how I had it before. Um, and so the, the one thing that's gonna be added to this use ref or to this variable is that now it's gonna have a, its current value is gonna be called current. So, um, First render dot current. We want to check that it's not um, not the first render. So then we can print that out. For here, when we want to set it, we don't have a special setter function. We just set it directly. So I can say first render dot current equals true, and then I go refresh. I can create my update. Why is my update not working? Um, I feel like oh, this one. Thank you. I have to set it to false. That good catch. Okay. So yeah, it it never went in here because it was never false. That makes sense. So create update update, 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 keep updating, and then delete. And now I'm only seeing these three. So yes, um, Yazid, you have a question? Yes, uh, can we go back and you explain again, uh, line 16 and 19? 16 and 19? Yes, does those two line run no matter what? Because we're not tracking any change of values inside the use effect, right? Yes. So because we're not tracking any values, um, this will get run when the component first renders and when the component is about to be destroyed. So when it's last rendering. Um, and it'll only get called when it's about to be destroyed or it'll only do anything when it's about to be destroyed, if we have this return function. So this return here, anything inside of this return will, will happen um, when the component is about to be destroyed. Versus here, because it's the regular, like inside the regular use effect, this will happen when the first, when the component first renders. How does that use effect knows when the component component is about to be destroyed again? Did you, did you explain that? Yeah, so because we don't have, so this gets called when it's about to be destroyed anyways. So I think even if I put it here, let's, let's check. I'm not sure actually if this, if I update, no, okay. So we do not want this return function in here. So it'll know once you put it inside 
of a use effect that has, um, sorry, I deleted this. Why am I missing parentheses? You're missing one bracket before the parentheses are yeah. deleted. Okay, let's let's go back to the top. So our use effect is taking the second parameter of what it needs to track to up to to call this use effect. So use effects get called on first render every time. Um, so that's why we had to add the special condition here because it was going to get rendered on on first render anyways. Um, when you have a use effect that is happening on first render, which is with the empty bracket. So you're not tracking any updates. You don't want it to run every time something updates in the component. You only want it to render when something, uh, when a component first mounts or when a component is about to be destroyed. That's where you specify the square brackets. So the square brackets pretty much tell it that this component, this stuff will only run either on component mount or on mount. Um, this re return statement specifically is what specifies the unmount behavior, right? When it's about to be destroyed, anything inside the return is going to be um, executed. Hey, Zainab. Um, mm -hmm. If you don't have the return function in the use effect, does the use effect just get destroyed after it runs through it? Or, yeah. Does the use effect get destroyed or what do you mean? Uh, like, does it unmount if we it don't will. have, like... Mm. Yes. So and the, the component will unmount regardless. Um, specifying... So if you put a return, that just specifies to run a certain code or a certain piece of code when we're about to unmount. So this is helpful if um, before your component is going to unmount, maybe you want to save data that's on the page. So let's say this page that I've written has a form and I want when someone accidentally exits out or whenever the component is about to, to unmount, um, I want code to run that will say, um, save the progress of, of this, this page. Um, so that's where it's helpful. Um, but yeah, so regardless, the component is going to be unmounted, but specifying what happens right before the component unmounts, this is where the return function will come in handy. Um, Yazid, earlier, did, did that clear it up or did you, did you have any other questions? No, oh, that was good. Thank you. Yes. I'm good, Zainab. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Any other questions? Okay. Um, so these use effects are very helpful. In, oh, I didn't put my value here. I can't spell. Yeah. Okay. So. What do you guys think we can use use effects for? What what would these be helpful for? Anyone give me a use case, any use case. I cheated a little bit. I read ahead on the notes, but uh, API calls, yeah, what yeah. Eric just said. Yeah, definitely. Um, making API calls in here is going to be very beneficial. So you can have um, 
when the component first mounts, so when you have it in just the empty square brackets, then that means that this is the beginning of your application. That's probably when you're going to want to do an API call. So you can pull all the data that you need and do that. Maybe you want to refresh it um, based on something, um, some, some state or value, then you can use something like this. You can put an actual value in here and it will refresh based on that. Um, what else? What else? I'm trying to think of. I mean, you can use it for, for pretty much anything, just anything that you want to happen automatically based on certain data updates. Um, yeah. Questions? I thought someone was talking. Um, okay, I, this is a good point. Okay, so in the curriculum, I would recommend looking at the second example of use effect. So that's an example of, of making the API calls. Um, yeah, I, I would recommend just going through that, maybe coding it yourself and seeing how, how it works. Um, we are gonna talk about a, a few other hooks today. Um, so one of the other hooks is use context. Um, I do believe for this one, I should just use our, our React News site for, for this. So I'm gonna open that real quick. Let's see, close this. Um, Gonna look at my app.jsx. Here I'm gonna stop this server. I'm gonna go into the React News site file. And I'm gonna run it. Okay. So our new site looks like this still. Um, don't know if you guys remember all the stuff that we did, but um, basically what we have, our homepage, we have a list of articles or a list of article teasers. And then whenever we click on this button, it reroutes us to an article page with the article ID sent in. Um, and here we just have some information about the article. We also have an embedded um, frame that allows us to view certain information. Um, it doesn't work for all the links, but for some of them it does. So here we can just kind of scroll through. These are very nice. Um, okay, so one of the other hooks that we can use is called use context. So use context, Use context, uh, context allows us to, um, so it, it allows a component to share information with, actually, so it allows a child component to receive information from any parent component that specifies context. Okay, so what does this mean? Basically, there's a lot of data moving around in our applications, and especially when our application gets bigger, um, it gets a little harder to manage. So context, it, it allows you to set the context of data on a higher level component. So let's say in our app, um, maybe I wanna set context for this all articles. So what that means is when I set, when I create context inside of my app, any 
uh, any component within my app, no matter how deep, would be able to access that data using the use context hook. So this allows for sharing throughout our application. Um, so I'm gonna actually so use context and create context are used together, um, not usually on the same component. So context um, allows the creation of a context pretty much. So let me show you an example of how that works. I'm going to import use context. Um, React. Actually, I'm not gonna import use context here. I'm gonna do create context. So on your top level component, you would want to create context. So the way to do that is at the top of your function around where your use states are, um, or maybe your use effect, whatever you have defined, um, you can create a new context. So I'm gonna call this one um, articles, maybe articles context or something like that. So articles context equals create context. And in here, this is the initializer. Um, you can set the value later, so we can just put it to null right now, but you can also just initialize it with whatever data you want. Um, for now, I'm gonna keep it null. Um, and so the way to actually use this context or to set it inside of my app, I'm going to put it on a, I can put it on a higher level. I can put it right below this div. Um, it, it doesn't really matter. I'll put it below the div here. So here I'm gonna access articles context. I probably should give it a capital A. Um, so articles context dot provider. So this allows me to provide this context to all of the components within where this context lives. So here, I'm gonna close this. I'm gonna grab the closing tag and put it after here. Um, I don't know where this came from. Okay. Did I need that? Find index. Okay, I, I don't remember where that came from. Um, but anyways, so we create this context. Um, it doesn't have a value, the value is null. So here I can just set the value if I want. Again, I can just set it in here instead of the null first. Um, and I want this context to contain my articles. So all articles. Okay, so in theory, now everything inside of here will have access to our articles. So if I go into, let's say our home path, oops, that's not what I wanted to go into. I'm gonna go into my homepage um, and then into my article list, which also contains the articles, right? Um, here, let's say I, I'm not sending in the articles two layers deep. I just wanna access it through the use context. So what I can do is I can import so I'm in my article list component. Um, I can import use context. So import use context from React. And then here I can say, um, this is kind of similar to the use props, uh, or sorry, use params in, in the router. So all we have to do is the constant, um, I'm gonna say articles from context equals use context. And then I just have to give it the name of the context. And let's go back. I named it articles concept, context. 
So I'm going to copy that, go back to my article list, and then add it in here. So here, articles from context um, is going to use the context. And then the way we can access it. So this will now be the articles. Um, so let's use it instead of the articles that I'm pulling in from the props. So I'm going to say articles from context.map on line 12. Um, and that should work. So let's does not. Articles context is not defined. Um, let's see if I did the context correctly. So React, use context. And like we've said before, the, the, the docs are very, very helpful. Um, I have quite a few links in the lesson for um, different docs that you can use or you should use. Um, Could it be because we created the context with null val as, as its value? So it's not like... Uh, I did send in, but I did send in a value af afterwards. So I changed the value to got it. all articles. Yeah. Um, so articles... Let's see, this is some good debugging. <laughs> um, so use context is that, where's create context? Let's look at that. It's not in here. Let me look at the new docs. Create context. Okay, so create the context. I'm gonna look at the entire example real quick. So use context. Do I have to import it? That's the question. So the provider goes in, value, use context. Did I misspell it? Articles context. No, this is correct. Okay, let me look at the stock real quick. Use context. So here this example um, is using context for the theme of the app. So it creates a theme context. Did I? So I created this, create context. Let me try just putting all articles in here instead of here. Um, Context.provider, let me try removing this top level app also, just to iteratively try to figure this out. Um, So the value prop is required where we need to actually, oops. We need to send in a value prop. So let's back here, add value. Articles. Um, Yeah, I don't understand which one I'm doing wrong. So I'm using context, the name of the context. I think I have to import it. It has to 
be able to understand what that name is. Like imported on the article list? I think so. But it isn't the point of it to like... That's what I thought. Oh, okay. All right, yeah. yeah. I think, so, yeah, because I, I didn't define this anywhere. So maybe it has to be like a separate thing that, let's see. This, I, I read something that you have to, underneath where you create your context, you have to put like an export statement mm -hmm. and then you can use it other places, but uh but not sorry not that same one the <clears throat> but that's okay. I, I haven't gotten it to work yet so but that's that's oh. all i found that was different than what we've been trying okay okay so let's i wonder if i can do an export in here probably not no it's not like that um so i can for app and also this is how you can export multiple components um what was it articles context so this is how you can export multiple components but because i added this i have to actually go into wherever my app.jsx is being called um and then fix the import. So it's not going to be on its own anymore. I have to put it in curly braces because it's one of few things that is being sent in. Um, here, now I can import um, articles context. So basically I just exported the context. I'm importing it here um, so I can use it. So if I refresh, that does not exist. That is because I'm trying to export something in this file, but this file only has context of what's out here. So it only has app. But inside this context, um, I'm trying to export. So I'll probably have to put this out here. I don't know if this is a good practice. It might not be. Um, but I'm just going to try to make it work. All articles is not defined. OK, I'm going to set this to null. <laughs> um, so I define the context above the app. I am going to create a provider from that context with a value of the articles that I want to send in. And now I can try to just access this provider from, or this the provided data from my article list by using the context. So I import that context and I use it. So if I refresh, now it works. And everything should work as, as it did before. Okay, a little bit of a workaround, but um, yeah, the the ducks only had um, only have information on how to do it once. We have to do more googling a lot of times to make it work with multiple pages. Zenam, can you yeah. explain why we will need to use use context instead of like props that we were using before? Because I'm not I'm not grasping like the difference. Yeah, it's it's an alternative. If you have a lot of nested components, and let's say there's 10 components within each other, and the top one needs to send something all the way to the 10th, um, use context will allow you to just set it out here and only access it where you need it instead of having to send it through the entire chain of, of all the components. So that's where use context is, is a little more helpful. You can set a context of information for the entire application and um, kind of use it throughout. Okay. 
Yeah, but you don't want to also put all of your data in there. Um, I do believe that performance wise, it'll make it mm, not that good. Um, but yeah, use context just allows you to use it when you have a lot of um, nested components and you just want to, you don't want to send in everything. So one of the examples is using themes. Like if you want to set a theme for your entire application um, and your like there's a button on a list that needs to know if it's a dark or light theme to to like toggle um, the color or something like that. Um, that's that's where the context could be helpful too. Um, any other questions? Yeah, could you just walk through exactly what you did again? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. So on my um, my parent component, whatever component I choose to be my parent component, I imported create context from React, and then I created a context called articles context. So this is going to provide articles to to all the components that are inside my app. Um, so line 17, I created the context. I set it um, to null in the beginning because I don't have access to any of the data since we're not inside of the app. Um, and then inside of the app, above my return, I can actually uncomment these now. So inside of my return, I create, I use the context that I created. So I, I created articles context. I use that as a component dot provider. So I use the provider function of that context to allow me to provide data to anything within the scope of, of this. And anything inside of my provider will have access to the data that I'm, I'm setting. Um, the value is just going to be whatever information you have access to in there. So right now, this is just a list of articles. Um, if I wanted it to be more than just that, I can say maybe um, articles is going to be this, but then, um, yeah, so I, I, can, I can make an object pretty much. I think I need to nest it, okay. Um, so like my articles are going to be this, and I also maybe want to send in, um, I don't have any other pieces of state, but just some value or some state that I'm keeping track of, and it's just something. Um, so I can I can create an object and, and have that be the value, and then every time I want to access information, I can, I can do that. It might complicate things, so you might not want to nest things too much. Um, but yeah, so I'm setting the value of this context to be my, my articles. Um, and now from anywhere within here, I can access this context. So I chose article list to be my, my point of, of access. So in my article list, I need articles. So I might as well grab it from here. So I'm gonna import the context that I created so we go back to our app. We had created it here and exported it. So at the bottom, I exported it. Um, so I can import the context. And then I can also import use context from React that allows me to use the context that I just created. And this is going to be the data. This is going to be the value of what I set in here. So. This value is here. When I say use context, it puts whatever is in the value into this variable, and then I can just use it to map through and create my article teasers. So when I go to my page, I'm able to see my list of articles as it was before. Okay, and how did you export? Did you just do like a curly? What was that? I did, yeah. So down here, export, I did curly braces um, and then I exported. This is actually not a good way of doing it. I think the more proper way would be 
to let's say create um, a context file maybe the dot sx um, so inside of here I'm going to take the context here I'm going to put it inside of this file and then I can just say export here Um, so because I exported it over there, I can just import it in here. So I can import articles context from this context file. And that way I don't have to do anything weird with the, the export of app. So app will stay the default export. Um, and then I can go back to my main and then just remove these curly braces here. Okay, so basically what I did, I just put the, the context in its own file. That way I can use it in, in multiple files and I can just um, create as many contexts as I want in, in this file and then just import it into different files. Um, but yeah, did, did that walk through? Cover it, or would you like it one more time? I mean, yeah, kind. I, it's still kind of fuzzy, but uh, like I, I still am not sure why we need to export so many things. I thought, I, I guess, I thought the point of this was like to, uh, to get the, the provider to give all of our uh, components access to our articles. Yes, but we won't be able to just access it without pulling it from it, basically. So this provider will give access to any component that chooses to pull the data, pretty much. So it won't just give all the data into these components, but you will actually have to use the context to pull the information. So this line, pulls the information um, and then the stuff that we did in the app, which was creating the context and just creating the provider, um, this is what provides it. So it's, it's just, if you have certain data that you don't wanna bother sending through props too much, um, there, are, there are some, practices that are better than others. So I would recommend reading into those. Um, Can I see the context one more time? The J the context.jsx, what do you, yeah. you just export? I just export it, yeah. I just created the article's context and I exported it. Do you have to import create context to that page? I was just gonna, yeah, it shouldn't have, it worked. Okay, that makes sense. Um, so import, create context. Ambiguous indirect exports. I think I have to say, if I create- The error is referencing article list though. What is it? Oh, export has takes the needs the curly braces, right? If I put default in front of it, it would have worked. Um, but to make it generic, so I can just say export default. Or not. I think with um export default, doesn't that only or from what I've seen, don't you only use that the um, named functions? Um, functions, yeah. Um, try to do articles context like this. Is that what you're saying, Izzy? No, I was saying that your error was saying was referencing article list before. Oh, it is. Thank you. I did not notice that. Okay, so article list, it's saying, I 
ambiguous indirect export articles. Uh, it was because I was exporting it. I didn't need the curly braces before, I think. Maybe I did. Oh my God, okay. <laughs> It's not from app, is it anymore? Since we got a new file, so it'll be from context. This one? No, on the um, the article list, because you have uh, articles context from app, but we don't have it in there anymore. Ah, yes. Good catch. Um, just dot slash. Where did I put my context? Yeah, oh, here it is. I'm blind. Um, okay. Getting a indirect export. Okay, now it works. Thank you for that catch. Okay, so I was just importing it incorrectly. Um, so this context file is just creating a context and then returning it pretty much or exporting it. And we're able to access it from here. So we import, we use the context. So now we have information around the articles in here um, and we can use it. And back in our app, this is the line that we had to put. Um, So the question, I have a few questions. Is there a benefit to use um, use context over props? Um, it's if, I think I, I already mentioned it. I don't know if I did before or after this question was asked, but um, if, you're, if you have a lot of nesting of components and you wanna easily send something from the top to the bottom, um, but it should only be, it should use it should be used sparsely. You shouldn't be just giving your entire app all the contexts of everything. Um, if it's not needed. Um, props. Okay. I'm just catching up on on the chats real quick. How is the article list when you import it from context? Mm -hmm. getting the articles because I would have thought that it would get null since it's defined as null in the context. So we defined it as null, but what it's defining is a, an attribute called value. So on line 40 here, we when we created the context provider, we set the value to the articles. So that's how it was able to know that this is what we want to send in. So here, um, is what defines the, the value of, of that context. But didn't you change the import from app.jsx to, like, didn't you cut out app.jsx when you swapped it to context.jsx? So the context, the, so this file is literally just creating a context, but it's not creating the provider. It's not creating the actual component here that is going to hold the information and give context to whatever is inside of it. So it's it's a three-step process. So step one, create your context. So use create context here, right? Um, second step is your provider. So you have to put your provider wherever you want your data to be. Um, so I want to provide data for these components, and that is what this will do. Um, the third step is to access that data from whatever component you want, and that is through the use context hook. So you have to grab the context that you created and then use it to grab the information. Um, Okay, so it's the import of the use context that talks to the app.jsx and not the bottom one. Which the like it's line uh in article list, it's line two 
that grabs the information from app.jsx and line three just knows that it's like a variable then? So line three, yes, it knows that it's just a variable. Line two is grabbing use context from React. So this is a hook that allows us to use the context. So the, the part that grabs the information from the app, from the provider that we created in the app, that is going to be this line, line seven. So line seven is grabbing the context with from the specified context. So when we say use context, this will do some functionality that will grab whatever is inside of articles context, wherever it is. So in the back end, React knows that articles context is, let's say, in this file an app and that its value is all articles and it's providing data to this part and this articles list is inside of my it's inside of my article page so it, it is connected to it um so when we try to use it you'll have access to it so now i have a follow-up question on what eric is asking Mm -hmm. uh, I thought that article list was talking to app.jss. So why are we importing line three again? Why are we doing line three? So line three, the only reason why we had to talk to app.jsx was to grab the name of the context, was to grab that, that component that we created. So initially we had defined it up here. We had defined it inside of our app, but we needed to ex export it to be able to use it in our article list. That's why we put it in a separate file. So this separate file is just going to create a context called articles context. And I'm importing this into both my app and my article list. So my app is going to use this context in a way that provides data. So we're gonna say, this articles context dot provider is going to have a value that will contain my articles and that will be accessible by any children um, components, any child components. Um, the second file that was that is using the context here is article and it is using it, right? So it's importing it here. It's using it to know which context to go to it's like it's it's just using its name or something like it's not using its actual name it's it's using the component itself to get the context and it will allow that because this article list is a child component of the 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 context that we created so here the provider that we gave it, it's a child component of the provider. So this context just allows us to use this name, to use this um, context component, both in app and inside of list, uh, article list. Did you repeat that, that last line you just said there? Sorry. Yeah, so the context file, I created so we can create a context with a certain alias and we can actually import that alias, import this context into both our app and into our article list, both into the place where we're gonna have our provider and the place that we are going to consume that data. So this context is going to be used in both places. In app, we're using it to create a provider that will provide data. And this provider will have a value of whatever information we want to send in or hold on to to, to give context. Um, and then it's going to be used in the article list to actually access that data. So we use that alias, we use that name of it, articles context with this use context hook. And that will give us the value that we defined here in the provider. So it's it's three pieces basically working together. 
Thank you. That uh, closed the loop for me on something. Awesome. And what is the reason why we have like three files instead of two? Um, because we needed to export the context. So I could have just here, actually, let's just. Yeah, that's why I'm asking, like, why you, we not just put it in inside the app? We can, oops. It's because I didn't want to export multiple things um, from my app, from, from my app file. Um, I don't know if this will actually work. So. I'm going to import the article context now. OK. So it is exporting not properly, though. Articles context has already been declared. That is because I have it up here. So let me just test this out. OK. This works. So you can just put it at the bottom of the file and then export it. Um, that will work as well. So you can just import it from the app if you want. This is just, if you have multiple contexts and you can just keep track of it in one file. So you can have all of your contexts live there. Um, you can have maybe some comments on where the providers are, um, but it might be easier to do it this way or that way. Um, it's a practice point like it's just preference and there might be um certain practices that are better than others but yeah it'll do the same thing other questions um eric why doesn't it give an error? Because um, I believe when the file is running, it knows it knows both what's app, what app is, and what articles context is. So it has that information before it goes into the app, um, since it's in the same file, I believe. Um, Kayla, you're asking if it's similar to includes um, in a Django template, kind of, like being able to use it in a different place. Is that what you're saying? The blocks. Yeah. Well, no, I think I'm, I, I can't say that it is quite the same as the templates. Um, in which way do you mean? Like um, like how with um, block names and using includes in the different templates, you're able to like use, I guess, your HTML across different files, but mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. I'm just. I'm it does. No, it is. Yeah, I I see it now. Um, so you're basically creating like the provider is like the information that you can import into other places. Okay. Yeah. Um. Any other questions? 